Hey everybody, this is Mike History 2 and this is my video about the history of Cambodia. So quick disclaimer, this video was actually made 10 months ago and as I said in my behind the scenes of my collaboration with Oli Bai, this was my original idea. So the thing is that I actually did make this video, he never made his, uh, but I actually did make this video. So this was my original video. Now bearing in mind that this was made 8 months ago, that's why the audio will suck and the quality won't be as good. But I hope that isn't too bad. Because um, I think you, you would still enjoy this video. So I'm just saying that just so you know. Uh, and yeah, enjoy. So the history of Cambodia begins in 240 when Phnan was established in southern Cambodia. Four years later, it expanded and conquered western Cambodia and the next year conquered all of it. In 550... Chenla conquered most of Funan under King Kitrasena Mahendravarman, with only the southern coast of Cambodia remaining part of Funan. In 628, Chenla finally conquered the rest of Funan under Isanavarman I, who moved the capital to Ishanapura at modern day Sambor Prekuk uh, from Kampong Thom. In 707, Chenla split into Land Chenla and Water Chenla, with the former in northern Cambodia and the latter in southern Cambodia. In 802, they were both conquered by Angkor under Emperor Jayavarman II, with its capital of Hariharalaya. However, he only took eastern Cambodia, while western Cambodia became uncivilized. However, in 820, he conquered western Cambodia as well. Yasovarman, who ruled from 889 to 910, moved the capital to Yasodharapura. Jayavarman VI, who ruled from 1080 to 1107, removed Hinduism as the official religion, which caused Cambodia to eventually become Buddhist. In 1177, Champa declared war on Angkor and sacked its capital. The war ended in 1181, and Angkor was renamed the Kingdom of the Khmais, with Jayavarman VII as its first king, and by this time, uh, the Kingdom of the Khmais was Buddhist. In 1431, the Kingdom of the Khmais was renamed Cambodia with Pon Heya Yat as its first king. In 1574, Ayutthaya conquered modern-day eastern Thailand from Cambodia. In 1756, Cochin China conquered southern Vietnam from Cambodia. In 1880, Cambodia became a vassal of Siam. In 1863, Norodom of Cambodia, the Kingdom of King of Cambodia signed an agreement with France establishing Cambodia as its protectorate. In 1867, France got eastern Cambodia as its vassal, and in 1904, it controlled northeastern Cambodia, and in 1907, western Cambodia came under French control as well. In 1940, France was invaded by Germany and Japan in World War II, and Cambodia became a vassal of Japan. So Thailand seized its opportunity to get, re get revenge on France for taking some of its land and declared war starting the Franco-Thai War. However, it ended the next year in 1941 with a stalemate. In 1945, after World War II ended, Cambodia was supposed to remain a vassal of France, but instead it was vassalized by Vietnam. However, France declared war on Vietnam in 1946, starting the First Indochina War. The next year, France occupied southern Cambodia. 1949, uh, Cambodia once again became a vassal of France, but was given independence in 1953, gaining complete independence for the first time in 173 years. By the mid-1960s, part of Cambodia's eastern provinces were serving as bases for North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces operating against South Vietnam, and the port of Sihanoukville was being used to supply them. As North Vietnamese and Viet Cong activity grew, the United States and South Vietnam became concerned, and in 1969, the United States began a 14-month-long series of bombing raids targeted at North Vietnamese and Viet Cong elements, contributing to destabilization. Nordam Sihanouk, the former king and prime minister, fearing that the Vi Vietnam War might spill over to Cambodia, publicly opposed the idea of a bombing campaign by the United States along the Vietnam-Cambodia border and inside Cambodian territory. Nor do Sihanouk say that if the United States wanted to bomb the Vietnamese communist sanctuaries, he would not object unless Cambodians were killed. Nor do Sihanouk, facing internal struggles of his own due to the rise of the Khmer Rouge, did not want Cambodia to become involved in the conflict. Sihanouk wanted the United States and South Vietnam to keep the war away from the Cambodian border. Sihanouk did not allow the United States to use Cambodian airspace and airports for military purposes. Throughout the 1960s, Cambodian politics became polarized. The 1966 National Assembly election showed a significant swing to the right, and General Lon Nol formed a 
new government, which lasted until 1967. Opposition to the government grew within the middle class, and leftists including Son Sen, Yang Sari, and Pol Pot, who led an insurgency under the clandestine Communist Party of Kampuchea in 1968. Norodom Sihanouk called these insurgents the Khmer Rouge. This started the Cambodian civil war between the government and the Khmer Rouge. However, members of the government and army who resented <clears throat> Norodom Sihanouk's ruling style, as well as his tilt away from the United States, did, ha did have a motivation to overthrow him. While visiting Beijing in 1970, Norodom Sihanouk was ousted by a military coup called the Cambodian Coup of 1970, led by Prime Minister General Lon Nol and Prince Sisowath Sirik Matat on March 18, 1970. Lon Nol assumed power after the military coup becoming a dictator and immediately allied Cambodia with the United States. On October 9th, the Cambodian monarchy was abolished and the country was renamed the Khmer Republic. The Khmer Republic immediately demanded the Vietnamese communists leave Cambodia. North Vietnam rejected the, v the Khmer Republic's request for the withdrawal of its troops, bringing the Khmer Republic into the Vietnam, Vietnam War. Meanwhile, the civil war changed with Grunk, the Khmer Rundo, and the National United Front of Kampuchea groups uh, supporting Norodom Sihanouk's restoration as king. North Vietnam and the Viet Cong joining the rebellion against the United against the new government supported by the United States and South Vietnam directly, and Australia, France, Canada, India, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand indirectly. The North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces, desperate to retain their sanctuaries and supply lines from North Vietnam, immediately launched invasions of the Khmer Republic. The North Vietnamese quickly overran large parts of Cambodia, almost reaching Phnom Penh. The North Vietnamese turned the newly won territories over to the Khmer Rouge. In April 1970, the American President Richard Nixon announced that American and South Vietnamese ground forces had entered Cambodia in a campaign aimed at destroying North Vietnamese base areas in Cambodia, called the Cambodian Campaign. What an original name. The United States had already been bombing Vietnamese positions in Cambodia for well over a year by that point, although a considerable quantity of equipment was seized or destroyed by American and South Vietnamese forces, containment of North Vietnamese forces proved elusive. The Khmer Republic's leadership was plagued by disunity among its three principal figures, Lon Nol, Sisowath Sirik Matak, and National Assembly leader In Tam. Lan Lon Nol remained in power in part because none of the others were prepared to take his place. In 1972, a constitution was adopted, a parliament elected, and Lon Nol became president, while Sisowath Sirik Matak became prime minister. But disunity and spreading corruption weakened the civilian administration and army. The Khmer Rouge insurgency inside Cambodia continued to grow, aided by supplies and military support from North Vietnam. Pol Pot and Yang Sari asserted their dominance over the Vietnamese-trained communists, many of whom were purged. At the same time, the Khmer Rouge forces became stronger and more independent of their Vietnamese patrons. But in 1973, the Khmer Rouge were fighting battles against Vietnamese, uh, government forces with little or no North Vietnamese troop support, and they controlled nearly 60% of uh, Cambodia. The government made three unsuccessful attempts to enter into negotiation with the insurgents, but by 1974, the Khmer Rouge was operating openly as divisions and some of the northern Vietnamese combat forces had moved into South Vietnam. Lon Nol's control was reduced to small enclaves around the cities and main transportation routes. More than two million refugees from the war lived in Phnom Penh and other cities. On New Year's Day, 1975, Communist troops launched an offensive which, in 117 days of the hardest fighting of the war, caused the collapse of the Khmer Republic. Simultaneous attacks around the perimeter of Phnom Penh pinned down Republican forces, while other Khmer Rouge units overran fire bases controlling the vital lower Mekong resupply route. An American-funded airlift of ammunition and rice ended when Congress refused additional aid for the Khmer Republic. The Lon Nol government in Phnom Penh surrendered on April 17, 1975, just five days after the Americans evacuated Cambodia, ending the Cambodian Civil War with the Vietnam War ending soon after. Immediately after its victory, the Khmer Rouge ordered the evacuation of all cities and towns, sending the entire urban population into the countryside to work as farmers. As the Khmer Rouge was trying to reshape society into a model that Pol Pot had conceived, the new government sought to completely restructure Cambodian society. Remnants of the old society were abolished and religion was banned. Agriculture was collectivized and the surviving part of the industrial base was abandoned or placed under state control. 
Cambodia, who neither money nor a banking system. Democratic Kampuchean's relations with Vietnam and Thailand worsened rapidly as a result of border clashes and ideological differences. While communist, the Khmer Rouge was fiercely nationalistic, and most of its members who lived in Vietnam were purged. Democratic Kampuchea established close ties with China, and the Cambodian-Vietnamese conflict became part of the Sino-Soviet rivalry with Soviet Union back in Vietnam. Border clashes worsened when the Democratic Kampuchean military attacked villages in Vietnam. The regime broke off relations with Vietnam in December 1975. 77, sorry, processing Vietnam's alleged attempt to create an Indochina Federation. On Christmas 1978, Vietnam invaded Cambodia, because that's a nice Christmas gift, starting the Cambodian-Vietnamese War, advancing about 48 kilometers before the arrival of the rainy season. The reasons for Chinese support of the Khmer Rouge was to prevent Indochina from uniting under Vietnam and maintain Chinese military superiority in the region. Soviet Union supported strong Vietnam to maintain a second front against China in case of a war and to prevent further Chinese expansion. Since Stalin's death, relations between China and the Soviet Union had been lukewarm at best. In December 1978, Vietnam announced <clears throat> the formation of the Kampuchean United Front for National Salvation under Heng Sam Rin. It was composed of Khmer communists who had remained in Vietnam after 1975 and officials who had fled to Vietnam from Cambodia in 1978. In late December 1978, Vietnamese forces launched a full invasion of Cambodia, capturing Phnom Penh on January 7, 1979, and driving the remnants of Democratic Kampuchea's army west towards Thailand. Within the Khmer Rouge, Pol Pot, Yang Sari, Nguyen Che, and Son Sen were in control. A new constitution in January 1976 established Democratic Kampuchea as a communist republic. Nor Dom Sihanouk resigned as head of state on April 4th. On April 14th, Kyu Samphan became the chair of the state presidium for a five-year term, and Pol Pot became the prime minister and dictator. Nor Dom Sihanouk was put under virtual house arrest. 20,000 people died of exhaustion or disease during the evacuation of Phnom Penh and its aftermath. Many of those forced to evacuate the cities were resettled in newly created villages, which lacked food, agricultural implements and medical care and were basically useless. Many who lived in cities had lost the skills necessary for survival in the countryside. Thousands starved before the first harvest. Hunger and malnutrition bordering on starvation were constant during those years. Most military and civilian leaders of the former regime failed to disguise their past were executed. Some of the ethnicities in Cambodia, such as the Cham and Vietnamese, suffered genocide. Entire families and towns were targeted and attacked, with the goal of significantly diminishing their numbers and eventually eliminating them. Life in so-called democratic Kampuchea was strict and brutal. In many areas of the country, people rounded up and executed for such small crimes like speaking a foreign language, wearing glasses, scavenging for food, absent for government-assigned work, and even crying. Yeah, that's how crazy it is. Makes North Korea sound nice. Former businessmen and bureaucrats were hunted down and killed along with their entire families. And the Khmer Rouge feared that they held beliefs that could lead them to oppose the regime. A few Khmer Rouge loyalists were even killed for failing to find enough so-called counter-revolutionaries to execute. While Cambodian socialists began to rebel in the eastern zone of Cambodia, Pol Pot ordered his armies to exterminate one and a half million eastern Cambodians which he branded as Cambodians with Vietnamese minds in the area. The purge was done speedily and efficiently, as Pol Pot's soldiers quickly killed at least more than 100,000 to 250,000 Eastern Cambodians right after deporting them to execution sites uh, locations in central, north, and northwestern zones within a month's time, making it the bloodiest episode of mass murder under Pol Pot's regime. Ah, the benefits of communism. Now, religious institutions were not spared by the Khmer Rouge either, as well. In fact, religion was so viciously persecuted to such a terrifying extent that the vast majority of Cambodia's historic architecture, 95% of Cambodia's Buddhist temples, were completely destroyed. Between 1.6 and 1.8 million people were murdered in the Cambodian genocide. And remember, there wasn't even a war, with perhaps half of those due to executions alone, and the rest from starvation and disease. On January 10, 1979, after the Vietnamese army and the Kampuchean United Front for National Salvation, why all these long names, invaded Cambodia and overthrew the Khmer Rouge. Kampuchea was established with Heng Samrin as dictator. 
Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge forces retreated rapidly to the jungles near the Thai border. The Khmer Rouge and the Kampuchean government began a costly struggle that played into the hands of the larger powers, China, the United States, and the Soviet Union. The Khmer People's Revolutionary Party gave rule gave rise to a guerrilla movement of three major resistance groups, the Front Uni National pour un Cambodge Indépendant Neutre Pacifique et Cooperatif, because that's a super easy name to remember, the Khmer People's National Liberation Front and the Khmer Rouge, now called the Party of Democratic Kampuchea. How nice. Civil war displaced 600,000 Cambodians who fled to refugee camps along the border to Thailand, and tens of thousands of people were murdered throughout the country. Peace efforts began in Paris in 1989, and the country was renamed Cambodia, culminating two years later, in October 1991, in a comprehensive peace settlement. On October 23, 1991, the Paris Conference reconvened to sign a comprehensive settlement giving the United Nations full authority to supervise ceasefire, repatriate the displaced Khmer along the border of Thailand, disarm and demobilize the factional armies, and prepare the country for free and fair elections. Nordom Sihanouk, president of the Supreme National Council of Cambodia, and other members of the Supreme National Council of Cambodia, returned to Phnom Penh in November 1991 to begin the resettlement process in Cambodia. The United Nations Advanced Mission for Cambodia was deployed at the same time to begin demining operations to expedite the repatriation of approximately 370,000 Cambodians from Thailand. About 90% of the eligible voters participated in the May 1993 elections. Pre-election violence and intimidation was widespread, of course, caused by former Party of Democratic Kampuchea, Khmer Rouge, security forces, I wonder why, mostly against the Fonds Uni National pour un Cambodge and Dipendant Neutre Pacifique Cooperatif and BLDP parties. The Party of Democratic Kampuchea, whose forces were never actually disarmed or demobilized, blocked local access to polling places. That's why they're called the Party of Democratic Kampuchea. Norodom Ranarid, uh, who is the son of Norodom Sihanouk, his royalist Front Uni National pour un Cambodge indépendant notre pacifique cooperative party, was the top vote, top vote recipient with 45.5% of the vote. The Front Uni National pour un Cambodge indépendant notre pacifique et cooperative then entered into a coalition with the other parties that had participated in the election. Coalition government resulted between the Cambodian People's Party and the Front Uni National pour le Cambodge et pour notre pacifique et cooperatif, with two co-prime ministers, Hun Sen, since 1985, prime minister in the communist government, and Norodom Rhinery. The parties drafted and approved a new constitution, which was completed on September 24, 1993. It established a multi-party liberal democracy in the framework of a constitutional monarchy, with the former Prince Norodom Sihanouk elevated to king. Prince Rana Reid and Hun Sen became the first and second prime ministers, respectively, in the government. Hun Sen and his government have seen much controversy. Hun Sen was a former Khmer Rouge commander who was originally installed by the Vietnamese and, after the Vietnamese left the country, maintains his dictatorial position by violence and oppression when deemed necessary. 1997, fearing the growing proud power of his co-prime minister, Norodom Ranarit, Hun launched a coup using the army to purge Ranarit and his supporters. Ranarit was exiled and fled to Paris, while other opponents of Hun Sen were arrested, tortured, and some summar summarily executed. And to end this video with a positive note, Hun Sen is still in power. Good job. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching.